All righty, uh, let's do a show of hands. Who has dealt with back pain in their life at some point? All right, that's, that's pretty much what we deal with in the country. About 80% of the people in this country at some point will suffer one debilitating episode of back pain. So I've seen this firsthand. I've been an orthopedic surgeon over the last 10, eight years. I was practicing at Kaiser Permanente, and I can tell you firsthand how we're doing a terrible job at treating this on a nationwide level. Amongst surgeons, we knew we overoperated on these patients about 60 to 70% of the time. That means 60 to 70% of the time, patients are getting surgeries that they do not need. So I left medicine about a year and a half ago. I wanted to be a bigger part of the solution. I knew that there was a bigger impact to be made, and I wanted to use technology to help revolutionize healthcare in a data-driven fashion. And so I'm excited to be here today to tell you about how we cracked the back pain riddle and how we're really practicing the future of medicine. So what's the problem at this point right now? The problem is that healthcare right now drops you in a maze if you have back pain. After you see your primary care doc, the next step is totally unpredictable, and it's very costly. You can see a surgeon, which could cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can see an injectionist. You can see a pain medicine specialist. It costs tens of thousands of dollars. In a fee-for-service model, this obviously leads to a lot of overtreatment, and in the end of the day, the patient's not consistently better. This has now led to a hundred billion dollar plus industry, it's just a direct cost. Indirect costs are well over 200 billion. And to, to give it some color, for a self-insured company like Google who has 53,000 employees, about 10% have chronic back pain. They seek care and that cost on average is about $8,150, $8,150. And so Google's spending about $43 million a year to manage this maze. And so right now, you know, with Obamacare and with limited resources to manage this maze better, people have to get through the system more consistently at a lower cost. And that is what is really creating this huge opportunity to serve this un unmet need. So what's the solution? The solution is at SpineZone, after the patient see the primary care doc, we've created a scalable solution to then see these patients in our clinics for 10 weeks, twice a week, and we basically can consistently and at a low cost have these patients get better and avoid costly procedures. So let's see how we did. If you compare it to the national average, this is looking at the cost on a nationwide level for treating 70 patients a month over a five per year period. It costs roughly around $30 million. That's what we're doing on average. The Sharp system running lean and then spine zone. We save on average during this five year period, we saved about $23 million. The Sharp CEO reported back to us that during the last five years, we saved them $3.5, $3.4 million. So where do these cost savings come from? As long as we see the patients early, right after they see the primary care, before they get to the specialist and get all their injections and, and studies, we can save costs throughout all the categories. Less imaging, 20% less imaging. This is the two-year case study we did in which we compared our our results with their traditional results. Neurosurgery costs, orthosurgeon costs go down, ER costs go down, hospital costs went down by 70% because we're in our cohort there are less surgeries. So obviously the hospital cost is going to go down. Our model is pretty simple. Our model is, you know, we're basically and why people are very interested because we want to put our money where our mouth is. We know if we get involved early, we're going to share risk. So how do we share risk? We either do a case rate and at the end of the day, we'll share you know, the savings or the risk, or we'll do a flat PMPM. -PM. And so we put our money where our mouth is, and, and this is what's getting institutions very excited. We treat everyone who has back pain, but we specifically have shown in our case study that even those patients who utilize the most resources, the obese, the diabetic, the elderly, the multiply operated, the patients who are narcotic dependent, across the board, these patients are having better function, better strength, and lower pain levels. And so right now, we have, we've treated 5,300 patients to date. We've had 53,000 live patient encounters in our clinics, in which we've been able to learn over the years. And we work with four large medical groups currently, and we're going to sign another three over the next three to four months, which we're really excited about. So let's, let's lift the hood of the car and see, actually, how do we get better outcomes at a lower cost? How does that actually happen? First and foremost, we have a multidisciplinary team. We're able to do the whole process with an exercise therapist versus a, a physical therapist. So an exercise therapist gets paid about 50,000 a year versus 120,000. With that lower level care provider, we're able to educate them in, on our process to have better outcomes. 
And so that's first and foremost. And we, it's easy to save costs if you withhold care. We provide the appropriate level of care at the appropriate time so we can ratchet it up to the next level care provider when it's needed. Clinical automation. We've taken the 30 years of our orthopedic knowledge and the 10 years of dealing with these patients and created a clinical automation system so that we can tell if a 40-year-old obese diabetic patient is still painful at week three, his posture is bad, he's still using narcotics, what are the next three steps to do? It's taken us years to develop the, the knowledge and working with these complex, challenging patients firsthand, we've now learned how to put that in, and we put it in a clinical automation system. Data analytics, we report back to healthcare institutions that on a population health level, what are the outcomes? What are the strength? What's the cost? What's the overall utilization? What is the patient satisfaction? Because we're 100% aligned with the patient, we can do utilization management. We pluck them out when they need an MRI, when they need an injection, or when they need a surgery. We don't, again, we're not withholding care, but we're doing the appropriate level of care at the appropriate time because we're aligned with the patient getting better. We objectify the strength. All the, all the data we gather is objectified, so the strength is objective. We gather, we have our hardware integrated with our software system so that we can report to a patient who is uh, weak that you are one standard deviation below your age match control, someone who's your age who doesn't have pain. This empowers them to get back on track and gives them something to look at that says even the frail, even the elderly, even the debilitated with multiple, multiple med medical problems can get better. Behavioral medicine, I'm going to show you an example in a second how powerful this is. Tons of literature out there that we all know that fear, stress, anxiety, mood, depression, all plays a part in back pain. We screen for this and we address this. We know it's very important to educate these patients well that we show them pictures of how patients with severely debilitated disease can get better over time with conservative measures. We give them that confidence. We show them MRI pictures of severely compressed nerves that the MRI later on dissolves. This is important data that patients do not know. As coming from an orthopedically focused perspective and educating them, patients want to avoid surgery. We, we make sure to address their po posture and flexibility. If the posture is bad, we objectify it. We look at where the shoulders are, the hips are. We take pictures over time, and we basically can and show them how correcting the posture improves the forces on their back significantly. Our patient engagement is five times the industry norm. We're able to keep 55% of the patients compliant for the 20 visits. So it's about 5x the industry norm. It's taken us years to get there, and we're constantly striving to get better. But right now, that's what our compliance is by texting them, emailing them, calling them. We know which patients are at high risk for dropping off. We'll engage with those patients even more. So here's an example of Jane. <clears throat> Jane had an injury, suffered a, a big disc herniation, as you can see with the red dot. Severely compressing her nerves, she was in severe pain. She went, saw an orthopedic surgeon, had her surgery recommended, sought her second opinion, was a little scared. By the time she saw the second orthopedic surgeon, she was painless and she was resuming her normal activities. So that surgeon said, look, you're probably okay, why don't you wait for a while? At this point, she had so much fear in her mind. She already had a surgeon that said, you need surgery. She had an MRI that was looking at her saying, your nerves are severely compressed. She ended up having a surgery, had the disc removed, did okay. Unfortunately, what happens when you move some of the discs, you herniate some more. Had a re-herniation, had a second surgery. Now all the discs are removed. Now there's no shock absorber. Now she has back pain. Now she had a fusion surgery. She's on her third. Unfortunately, the fusion didn't take. She had a revision surgery. Then after the revision fusion, she had another level. Long story short, she had five surgeries, and she's severely debilitated in severe pain. And the worst part of this is that she's 28 years old. And this should never happen. And unfortunately, in medicine, it happens very frequently. So this is why I left medicine. This is why I'm excited to be here. And this is, this is basically why we're trying to change medicine. So in summary, we've saved costs 75% compared to the national average. Our compliance is 5x the national average as well, and we've been able to reduce costs by 46%. We've, we've solved the back pain riddle and hope to lay the foundation for the rest of medicine. So thank you.